Hey guys, today I'm with Russ Jones of Smoky Ribs and Marcio Borgazon of Hog Addiction. We're at Marcio's place, Hog Addiction headquarters is what we call it. They're filming in the background. We're doing a video on SEA state competition. Marcio's giving some pointers. I think you're gonna really like this, especially if you're into the state competitive uh, or looking at doing that. This will probably be a great video to watch. So anyway, we're happy to be here with Russ Jones and Marcio. So let's go check this out. Okay guys, let me set up what we're trying to accomplish today. Marcio has been in uh, quite a few of these state competitions. Russ Jones and I competed with Chad Whittington of Maggie's Farms in the Sheds competition that happened uh, just a few months ago. And we've all gotten the steak bug, okay? So what we're doing today is Marcio's got this full ribeye or this uh, ribeye roast. He's gonna cut like four uh, competition steaks that are an inch and a quarter out of this roast these are going to be our prep steaks okay things are our practice steaks we're going to use different rubs on these steaks to determine which combination we like the best then we're going to use a ribeye that Russ Jones got from the Hassel cattle company out of Texas their beef is uh, Wagyu bread with Angus okay uh, and it is phenomenal it is the beef that they used at the shed for their competition so this is a clinic Marcio does a great job Russ and I are there to assist in any way but uh, Marcio is definitely putting on a clinic here so uh, sit back if you love state competitions or you want to learn about it this is a great video to start with obviously stake events are very competitive and the people that win are very detailed in their process all right so if you were looking at these four stakes these are the ones you had to choose from to be in a competition what we're we looking for i'd stay up here top three okay that's too big it, it's not a bad stake it has a beautiful spinalis and i you know i wouldn't if i if you know my option i would not turn this stake down you know, this, uh -huh. this has a beautiful spinalis here, but you see, it starts here and it ends here. It starts here, ends here. So, you have a larger spinalis here. Uh -huh. So basically when you turn this in, when you drop your steak off, you have to let them know which way you'd like to cut. Right. So a lot of times people cut, they cook their steak and they, they present a certain way, you know, if, cause they're gonna, for instance, if I'm turning this steak in, and, but I'd like my grill marks to be presented this way. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell them that I'd like for you to take this. Okay. So the judges will take this and eat this. This is just for doneness. So now I turn my steak this way. That's what they're gonna eat and this is doneness. Right. So they're not gonna touch this other top part. So this is the front of the box? Yes. Gotcha. So when I open my box, it's gonna be set like that. Mm -hmm. So these are great tips. The judges are going to eat the spinalis, the ribeye cap, so look for the best one when you pick out your steaks, and then decide how you want to present that steak in the competition box. Now Marcio is going to show us how he approaches trimming the steak. So basically, Brian, I've got right. one of my favorite steak here, you know, I picked two of them, and, and it's a simple trimming process. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to take out anything that I don't find desirable to eat, and then I, I wouldn't want to eat, so I wouldn't want to serve you. So. I'm going to start on the top here, getting that glob of fat out. Then every time I make a cut, I'm trying to tuck my steak back together to make sure. That's I'm, a pretty I'm, steak, yeah. Yes, so, you know, there's a little membrane here. You want to get rid of that, and, right. and you can pretty much peel it out with a knife. Mm -hmm. See? Oh, yeah. You don't, you don't want to serve nobody that. Would you right. like to eat that? Then that little guy right there, we're going to get him out. Mm -hmm. Now these steaks that Russ brought, I think they're Wagyu steaks, aren't they, Russ? Yeah, Texas. So, so we're gonna see a, quite a difference in the marbling Absolutely. of those Absolutely. compared to these. Well, but. They're, they're Texas Wagyu, which is a crossbreed between Japanese Wagyu, and he has an F1 Angus. So it, 
kind of produces like an extreme prime beef. Nice. nice. Y'all, yeah, yeah, y'all yeah. had it's it like the best of both worlds there. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> See, I, I can even get, my knife is not sharp. Are you trying to get, well, it doesn't look like you are, but you see some people that try to get this round. I've done it. Round I've done them on a the path. Important or? No, it's it's just a look. It's mm -hmm. it's you know, it's just a, a look. If if you, that's the look you desire right. to go with, and I've at the shed. That's how I cook my steak. Did you? Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's you don't get. It's a preference. Judges are not going to say, "Hey, that's you know." Some people say, "Oh, that's look like a hamburger pad." Uh -huh. You know, it's just a preference. Basically, that's all it is. Yeah. It's, it's, these competitions, I mean, they're artwork too, huh? I mean, you know, absolutely. There's a lot of people. It's a flavor and a beauty contest, Abs so whatever. Absolutely, you yes. So, there they are. Pretty, pretty. I'm gonna get this final one mm. trim. So, guys, this is what I want to show you guys. Which you may run into this on ICA. I have to where, you know, you draw on a number and and your steak may look like this. And here's here's what I what my solution for that is, and uh, and of course I've had great mentors that that passed this down to me, and and as simple as as that, now what is that going to do? So basically, what this guy is going to do, we're going to insert this together. We're going to tie the stake, but a lot of times it'll it'll end up trying to poke up like that, and so you don't want that. So what these guys are going to do, we're going to insert them through and we're going to protect those muscles from jumping up. When you squeeze it with your line, you don't want them to move because basically what would happen is, see if I can get you guys a good view. So you're trying to, you see how that kind of oscillates back and forth? Well, you want that to stay together as, as long as you can at, on the process of cooking. And, and, and the way to do it is, those guys. This is that's the twine right here. We're gonna get it. We're gonna just let the knife do the job. Wow, awesome! <laughs> I know that knife is sharp, but I'm not buying that. Here we go. Let's put some. All right, it's time to tie these stakes. A lot of times when I when I tie, certain things are gonna come up, and I still do a another right. another trimming. So this is this is basically what I do as far as my tying. Okay, go a few looks right here, because if you're trying to do just a single knot, right. you're going to try to hold it, push against your stake, and, and trying to get they, that they second knot. They call that the butcher's knot, I think, or what do they call that? I, I don't know the particular name, but I see, that's... That a lot, it works. It holds it'll hold yeah, see, I don't have to try to fight to get a second knot, and right. so once I get that tight, I go back in here, trying to get my shape. Of course, I want to get that line down. Cause I'm gonna try two of them, okay? I'd like to, to tie it twice. Okay. So, and then look, when I'm, when I'm gonna wait until I tie my second one, here I come with my second line. This one is a little <laughs> short, still gonna be fine. I'll go with at least four or five times. And, here it comes. You can apply a little pressure in it, you know? Right. And then, so as, as you apply that pressure, you're gonna realize, see, all of a sudden my stake is a little higher here. And that has to do with the cut. So I do actually have a little more meat here. I'm gonna take my knife and this, it's a perfect knife for that. I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna slightly take it, just what I need. Mm -hmm. Now you so guys, we want a uniform height to cross the top of that stuff. Absolutely. Okay. That's that's my desirable. My my goal is that when it sits on that box, and this is see this is a perfect knife for that. It just this is a tremendous job. And now we're getting there, and so my next thing will be the edges. You see those edges? I don't want them doing that. I right? I can move my lines up a little bit, but they still there. So what I'm gonna do, typically I use a pair of scissors. If you have really good knives, you'll be able to accomplish the same thing. I'll just come around here.
just like that it changes you just kind of rind that over mm -hmm. and you know you can put as much work as you want to you make your presentation just as beautiful i mean it it gets to where you're going to get carried away i do and and i, I wouldn't blame you so all right make note of these tips trim any membrane or anything you wouldn't want to serve use skewers to hold the steak together Tie the steak with the two strands like Marcio showed you, and then trim the steak edges in the top to ensure uniform shape and height. Now it's time to do some seasoning. Marcio always has something up his sleeve, like this particular process that he uses to ensure that the seasoning penetrates very deeply into the steak. I like to season my steak pretty well. And when I mean well, I want the salt, I want the penetration, I want it in it. <laughs> Get that flavor down in there. And if you're doing a steak in your backyard, bug of salt is your gun. <laughs> it's like you got some uh, smoked cow steak dust. Steak dust. And then here we got Mama's Competition Blend from Dirty South. Okay. So today we're going to be doing two different steaks, two different flavor profiles, they kind of close. Right. I tried these two rubs, they're both excellent. Both of these guys are good friends of mine. Uh, old Smokehouse Bayou, Brian. Oh, Brian there. Oh, Brian. <laughs> oh, old Brian. Brian. <laughs> old Brian, is it's O-E-L, that's how we do it, old. So this is his. O-E-L. O-E-L, O-O-A-E. O-L-E. It's spelling, spelling contest. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, and then the next, the side, the, you know, the next two here. There's a Brazilian we, ways to spell it, Marcia. Oh, there is a Brazilian. <laughs> so, Dirty South, man, this fella right here, my buddy Troy, phenomenal seasoning. They actually won. Where are they out of? This right here out of uh, Tennessee. Tennessee. Yes. Okay. So, let me see his town. You can go to. Uh, Show the label on that. Okay, so the label is Dirty South. And this blend that. right here is Southern Links blend that they partnered up together. Two great guys. This is this is good stuff. We're gonna we're gonna go take two of these. And we're gonna do two of these guys. So here we go. Get close. Look, look at the consistency of that. So basically what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go really heavy. I ain't scared. As y'all can see. The wind's kind of picking it up. And I'm gonna Pat it down. That's a beautiful rub right there. Man. Trying to keep the wind out of it. All right, let's see. Don't be scared to. My thing is about seasoning on a steak. This is not a, if I would serve the steak to my wife, she loves a steak. Right. I would not heavily season this way because she's going to actually enjoy the whole steak. This is way over seasoning. So that's <clears> really <throat> what you want. Judges are going to take one, one bite. bite. So you really want them to get the best out of it. All of that flavor, you know. Uh, steak bayou, steak dust right here. Steak. This, this guy right here has got garlic, it's got paprika, you know, others, you know, cayenne pepper. It's got a little kick in it. It's bayou, you know, kind of Cajun. So you want that, you want just a little bit of that. So you want you want the judge to be able to experience all those flavors at one bite. So we're gonna let that rest for a minute and we're gonna move over to Dirty South competition blend here. Wow, you really do pack it on there. Yes. Yes. Then we're gonna, I'll let them rest for about 10 to 15 <clears throat> minutes. Mm -hmm. Then I'm gonna take, once the seasoning is in it, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna do my other side. Okay. And so, I wanna, a couple minutes will be fine before you flip, but that's just how I do it. Just wanting to sweat out a little yes. on that side. Okay. Yeah, so we're gonna let this guys rest. Hey, I think it's time for us to get a fire going. What do y'all think? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Let's do it. Let's get the chimney fired up with some B&B &B so we can put that tribal grill to work. I break them a little bit to start. Ah, okay. 
because you know a lot of times they just have a lot of air on it so i'm gonna break those to start my chimney for any of you that haven't seen this this is the tribal fire grill and uh it'll fit 22 and a half inch uh drum smokers i'm not sure if it'll fit a weber kettle i looked at the fire basket it looks like it might but i'm not positive i know it would the weber smoky mountain but uh this thing is bad to the bone Man, you know, they got a thing going with Tribal Fire. If you win an SCA event, they pay you a grand. Really? Yeah. Wow. Marcia was telling me about yeah, that. Yeah, so basically we'll, we'll set a bounty on you. You know, of course, we can't give everybody a grill, but if you purchase a grill from us and you like to compete in SCA, right. just let us know. We'll put a bounty on you for first place, $1,000, and 250 if you place top 10. So basically, you know, for SCA, that's pretty good. That's really that is good. good. So, yeah, yeah. And this this does a phenomenal job on the steaks. Mm -hmm. That's just more uh, icing on the cake right there if Absolutely. you come in first. Yes. Yeah. Now, Marcio is going to season the rest of the steak. You can season the edges of your steak as well. Okay. Okay. Man, so you're going for a flavor explosion when you... Absolutely. No, no, no safe here. We're not going to play safe at all. We're just going to go aggressive. We're going to take this... We're going to give them judges some there. that they really want to. And, and you know, anytime using a real thick, thick, thick rub, mm -hmm. working on my grill marks, I'm going to dust that off a little bit with my hands because I don't want none of that to burn char, when I char yeah. too bad when I'm doing my. Right. So that's you why I, I'll, I'll give it a, a longer yeah. time on my steak to absorb all the seasoning, and it's okay for me. Some people even wash it off. Really? They they just completely wash it off and start over with a new finisher, you know. It, it takes. I've seen it all. Doing that mainly the, for what penetrates. And then, yes. Okay. Yes, and then, you know a lot of those coarse, especially in this case that we're using something that's a little coarse. A lot of that tend to burn a little too much, and, and you're going to see it can become a little mass. It's messy on your griddle. Right. You got to clean it up real good every time. So I, I like personally, I like to remove that just okay. a little bit, just a tad. But so you're doing the back side. The back side now, and, and, and uh, we're going to treat those edges as well. We're going to turn our steak on the side. And anytime you're doing this, be, be very gentle with your steak. You don't want to really be aggressive moving, you know, because it can really it can start. Break apart on you. Huh? Coming, losing. And then we're going to we're going to penetrate them with those uh, skewers. We're going to keep them in a good shape so we can. And look, again, you know, I'm not being shy on that seasoning i want i wanted to be there we're going to turn that bad boy right there and look at it steak dust smokehouse by you in the house i guess we're going to have a little hit off here and see which one really is what's up huh yeah yeah man oh uh, we're not if if troy's better we'll keep troy on the loop we'll just let him know later <laughs> Hey, here's the pro tips on your seasoning. Don't be shy. Be aggressive, man. The judges only get one bite, so make it count. Be sure and season the edges. And when you use a coarse rub, dust off the excess so it won't burn when you're grilling your steak. Um, do you skewer all your steaks or just the ones that you think every have one. a problem? So every time oh, you're yeah. going to do this. Yeah, absolutely. Because okay. some of them that you don't think it does, but, you know, with the ribeye, you can see it in here. It's very common that they're going to move on you. Okay. There's no, there's no doubt. See that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and a lot of times, you can press it when you're cooking, but when you take it out, they just yeah break apart. Huh? So the rest, it's the word. This is going to really play a big game on it to me. Right. So it really plays the be the better. So, here what we're going to do? We're going to get ready to stick this guys and and what I like to see this is. This is where I decide where I'm going to stick. You see that? Yeah. So in order to mobilize that to where it's not going anywhere, so I'm thinking I'm going to go across right here. No particular way. Right. I wanted to just keep that spinalis there, so I'm, I'm thinking this is where I'm going to go. So I'm going to lay my skewers there, and I think that's what I want. I think that's going to give me the bass right there. I have no worry about this coming up, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go straight to the middle. Here we go. And then you got to remember when you do this, you want to make sure that your steak continues to the, the shape that you want. Because a lot of times 
as you push a skewer through, you can change, change the, the, shape. the shape of your steak. Gotcha. So here's my next one. All right, that seems like a world-class tip to me. Yeah, man, right I mean to tell you. So, then we're gonna get this other ones going and we're gonna put some love on those. And then here's, here we go. I'm gonna, I always wanna get that steak and throw it on my hand. Cause some of them, see that's kind of connected right there. And so this may be a little different from the other one. I'm gonna start a little higher up here and go across right there. And look, this is, this is one of the things that can occur and I'm glad this happened because I can point it out to you guys. As I'm pushing my skewer through, there he goes. Popped I up. actually created created some that I don't want. Huh. Okay. See it 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 created yeah. some that I don't want to happen. So here, here's up. what you can do, guys. You can come back, reset it, and get back into the groove. We can actually leave that alone. We're gonna go apply a little pressure there because that's what's giving me a little trouble. And here we go, it's flat now. Oh, See? Mm -hmm. yeah. So those little those little things make a difference. If you're trying to get a steak flat, to me, they make a difference. That's you know, if you really are into this thing like I am, you yeah. know, I like it to have my steak perfect. I like it to be spot on. Spot on. So I, I do pay attention to those things. Here we go again. It's gonna to try to sneak up on me and I'm gonna apply a little pressure there. And here we go. And we're across. Look awesome. at that. Hmm. More important tips. Look, pick that steak up to see where it might break apart, and this will help you place your skewers properly. And don't be scared to adjust them to ensure your steak stays uniform. All right, we got 628 on that grill temp. I got the look. He's got the grill ready. The steaks have been uh, getting to, I guess, room temperature or whatever. He's fixing to show us how to grill these babies. <laughs> Steaks, I always like to keep in mind the temperature of my steak before I grill it. Right. And so I always check my temperature. It's important to you to know that's going to add some consistency to your cooking. Because if today you season some and you bring them back to the refrigerator, right. and tomorrow you decide that you just want to let them rest on the countertop, mm -hmm. you're going to get two different results. Really? So okay. you got a colder steak and you got a, a more of a room temperature steak. Yeah. So that's going to affect your cooking. You've okay. done this, if you would say. So we're gonna just take this guys and like I said, I, you know, some of this stuff that's a little out there, that's a little too thick, I'm just gonna lightly take it out of here and you can hand take it. Take your hand and use as a brush and just basically only leave, look, look how beautiful that is. That's pretty. That's a that beautiful is. color right there. <clears throat> we're gonna do that with all four steaks and uh, some of those little thick crumbs of onions, garlic, we wanna get that out. It, it just helps you when you, when you're cooking, keep your grates clean. Of course, every time you turn, I'm gonna show you here. So let's check her, uh, Russ, Brian, either one. Check, check, check the her grill temp and see what we at. I'm showing five, 532. That's perfect. You want it to be in between 500 and 600. Okay. I think that's perfect. So okay. what we're gonna do, we're gonna do a little treatment with the duck fat. Gotcha. What was your internal temperature on these? Probably? So this, they're running up. All of them are about sixty degrees right Six, now. Okay. Yes. So, they're they're been sitting out, and and I'm okay with that. Now, you want to keep an eye on it. You don't want to leave your steak out too long. You right. got a gap in between about three or four hours. Gotcha. You know. So I'm gonna take this guy, and I'm gonna carefully. Place it in here. We're gonna take our, our weight. We're gonna go on top of it. And then start our timer. And your timer set for a minute and 15 for each side. You know, anybody out there looking for a great tool, if you grab that for me, Russ, yeah. and just show it to the camera. That's made by Timberworks and it's absolutely a great tool to keep up with your time and nothing will run away from you because we've got a minute 15 for one turn <clears throat> basically a minute 15 for the next turn and then you flip there's another minute 15 and then to top it off you got your last one 
So hmm. very handy for competition. Very, very mm-hmm. for competition. But this would be handy for really any cook. Anything. If I'm yeah. cooking things here and I've decided that I'm cooking chicken and I have some butts cooking, I, I've got four different timers that I can set. Right. And you know, just a little tip, I put a little tag on the side. You know, typically I just, right. I know where I, my order are. You know, I typically, my top one is pork. The second one is, you know, chicken, brisket and fish. Right. You know, kind of that order. Okay. But I'll put a little tag on it so you don't get lost. So we're gonna let this guy sit here. It looks like we got, before we do our first turn, all right, so we took our steak out of here. It's a good, great way to keep up how you have your steak taken out of the grill. Is this too actually tells you where it came from? And then here we go. We're gonna come. About, we're gonna offset about 45. 45. About 45. We're gonna let that baby sit right there. I'm gonna reset our time. Dominant again. Yes. Treat those grates, and we're gonna get a little duck fat. Ooh, Ooh, look at that! Nice, That's beautiful right there, guys. That is beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> awesome. Those things were like solid. So one of the like things you drew them on there with a marker or something. <laughs> Absolutely. So that's a kind of a 45 angle that I put on it. Now you can experience. You got two sides of a steak. Right. You get to choose which side you're going to present. Yeah. So if you like to do a square checker kind of on the other side, right. hey, cool. let's try that here now and see do which one. Do a 90 degree turn. Yes. Okay. So Hopefully. basically, it'll, it'll give you an idea which one. Yeah. You know, because you have, always have two options. Sure. On the side, which side you're really going to turn in. And I, that's what I do. I, I typically go around my steak and I look. I'm going to take this steak out and I'm going to let it rest here until I get to my 135 internal so you're doing more of a front sear than a reverse sear yes okay do you want yes. a piece of aluminum foil or anything on that no we're going to just leave it exposed we're okay. going to let it we're actually going to let it sit where it's kind of still warm and just let this take rest yeah here we go man that looks good no kidding look all that juice started coming out of the pot. Really so we're right good. there. We're going to go 100% on this side. And we're going to set our time. That weight you're using, what would you say as far as uh, weight on that? So how much would you say that weighs of that lid? Uh, uh, probably, I think this is about three pounds. Three pounds? Okay. Yeah. We've got about 22 seconds left on this bed board. And the and dome gonna... is doing what for you, Marcio? Why, why so are you? So the dome is basically trapping my heat to preserve the top of that steak to continue to cook and give an even cook. Okay. So I don't want it to really stop cooking. Gotcha. I want it to, the heat to continue to creep in there and continue to cook. So I have... On the side that's up or whatever. Thing. Yes. Okay. A perfect medium rare steak. And here we are. We're going to go ahead and take that out. We're going to probe this steak. We're going to take it out Ooh, and set it here. Pretty. I'm going to set it right up there and rest it. Let's see what that temp is. We're at 131. 32. So we're, we're so close. So what we're going to do, we're going to let it, we're going to let him rest right here. So you're wanting to get to 130? 135, that's what I've been looking okay. for, yes. So. Well, that is another advantage of this tribal fire. You can set it on that thing and, and still have a little heat going your, to your it. Your steak or? is still, and, and look, this is one little tip for you. You know, this is the side we just cooked. Look at that. We're going to turn to this oh side goodness. to where it was resting more on the opposite side of the heat. It's going to do right. some really good to it. And then, Hey, let's throw another one in there and see what we can get, get in here. Going. All right, here's the grilling tips to remember. Get your grill around 550. Use a weighted press, dome, and have some duck fat ready. Put that steak on there for a minute and 15 seconds. Lift it, clean your grill grate, and spray with duck fat. Then turn your steak for your grill marks and replace. Do the same on the backside, and look, we're shooting for 135 internal temperature. 
Okay. All right, so we've got three other practice steaks to grill. I'm not going to show all that. Then we're going to do the Texas Wagyu. But we do have another tip, and you guessed it. It involves butter. Now, the butter is going to simply melt away, but it's going to add a lot of flavor. Bless you. That's perfect. It is perfect. I think we ought to take this bad boy and rest it. We're going to do a little cut. A little dust in here. That's your finishing seasoning. That's my finishing seasoning. Uh, I love this. And, and I like to press it down a little bit so it kind of goes away. I don't want the judges to be looking at all of that. So we're going to treat this other side. Mm. And, and as you can tell, we, we do have a, a favor side, don't we? Mm, yeah, that's that other side. That's the other side, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to be shy on this side because it's not going to show. So now one thing that you may not want to forget, <laughs> it's those strings. You want, you want to cut them off before you turn, turn them in. A lot of people forget them. That'll be cute, you want it? Absolutely. So I'm good to go. All right. We'll yes. See y'all later. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Mm. Look at that. Perfect medium rare. And then here's the other one. Mm. Gorgeous. <laughs> that right there. Judges cannot say much about that. Maybe a little, little floss right there. And look at that. So, time for the true, huh? Oh man, I can't wait. I think- uh, Smell incredible. No kidding. I think we put enough effort and hard work on this that I expect a good taste steak. What do y'all think? I know it sure looks I good. I certainly expect a good so taste steak. So this is, steak. what do we got here? We got Dirty South and Smokehouse Bayou. Okay. So we're gonna, let me go ahead and take the spinalis right here. I actually think, are you sure? Going by the grill marks, I think that might be Smokehouse Bayou. And that's dirty south. Did you? Which one did you do first? You did this dirty one. south first, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. Because remember those wide grill marks you had? Or is that it over that's there? It. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Is Brian trying trying to pull up some on us here? Not <laughs> at all. I just see these grill marks here, and they look wide. Troy, Man. if you're watching this, you better always watch Brian. Not just keep an eye on him. You nailed that meeting. And right subscribe. Yeah. <laughs> you got right, great I, color on that. I think I think this is good. Let's just do our thing here, you know. Get a little. This is spinalis, you say? Yep. Mm. Man, melt your mouth. It's Killing. incredible that the amount of seasoning I put on it. Mm-hmm. And you would think you'd get hit by a ton of flavor. Perfect, in my opinion. Mm. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Now my first piece wasn't so salty. My second one started kicking. Did you did you feel that? Mm. Kind of. I'm enjoying it. Maybe it's because I got a centerpiece. Look at that. Mm. Look at that. Wait a minute. Delicious. Hey, our cameraman. Let's get our cameraman. Where you at, cameraman? You come snatch this from us. Hey, our <laughs> people is taking care of. What about the camera <laughs> woman? We got to take care of her too. But we gotta give her a, a, a bite size for a girl, you know? Here we go. Oh, cool. <laughs> All right, here we go. Dirty South, and we're moving on That's to good, huh? good old. Oh, wow. That's that's it right there. That's a little more rare, huh? I think they're about on the edge of, uh... oh man. That's perfect right there. Mm -hmm. Somebody there. <laughs> Russ is moving mm. a little slower. Ooh, that's good. Mm. 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 Very good. Man. Great flavor. That smokehouse bite? Mm -hmm. Smokehouse Killer, bite. Man. That is good. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm. Camera one. Guys, we got to get y'all's up. Opinion on this. I'm gonna put a link on my video. 
for your website. And if y'all want this mm-hmm. smokehouse by you, what is that? That's a steak. That's duck. a steak, though. Oh, yep. man. Mm-hmm. That's killer stuff. Mm-hmm. That is good. Yeah, it's really, really good. That's good, Brian. Thank very, you. very good. You seem surprised. I think it has a little more of a, yes, <laughs> got me by surprise. That's that's really good. It's got a perfect I've been amount of saltiness. This, this right here, and, and you know, we use the same amount, but, but mm. I think that's a... Yeah, that's, that's got a little bit more flavor to it. Yes, really I'm going for that. Mm-hmm. You know, all right. I agree. I'm going for steak. Yeah, that's, that's really good. good. Excellent. A little fat right there. That's a good stuff right there. Mm. Mm. Guys, stay tuned. Yeah, we got we got the main steak to do. These are all tex, uh, test runs, but this is the Texas Wagyu we're going to be doing up here shortly, right? Hey, we're going to get this baby. We're going to put. You know, our, our run was the two rubs. Now we decide that Smokehouse Bayou Dust is oh, yeah. head of the game. And we're going to go ahead and put her on that and just All right. tear that. Cool. Bayou and up. we've done shown everything that he does to prep the steaks, you know, and to get to your test run on these steaks. So we're probably just going to jump right into showing the grilling of it and then another taste test. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's get to it, guys. Good. All right. All right, because of the link to the video, we're going to jump straight ahead. We did all the same steps on the Texas Wagyu from Hassel, and we're ready to taste test this bad boy. Let's go ahead and see what we got here. So let's spin all this down. We're going to go down this way, mm. and hopefully we got something good in here. I caught some of that fat in there, but check that out. You can tell the amount of fat on this steak. Yeah. Oh it's, yeah, it's highly marked, it is. man. No kidding. I'm gonna do a second cut on this Pinalis, just to show you. That had a really look. wise Pinalis on it too. Look, look at that. That's gorgeous. Yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. Look at this. That is gonna be flavor I, I'm ready. I'm ready to taste this. I don't know about y'all, but let me, let me just get in here. Let's see what it tastes like. Ooh, that's good. Definitely a little higher on the sodium. Mm-hmm. Let's get you that first bite. Flavors, I can still taste all the flavors at the Oh, it's excellent. Like it's it's right very here. tender, very juicy. Mm. Wow. Let's see as we cut here. Let's see what we got here. Yeah. Nice. Mm. Nice, I think, nice. I think that's that's the go right there. If, you, if you're there, let it rest. Man, those, those suckers. It could, you know, for, for the medium rare or the rare guys that can use a little less yeah. fire on it, you know, we expected it to be a little more cooked because it was a tender steak. But right. hey, oh, that's perfect. If you get that shot right there, that is beautiful. Check that out. That's perfect. You nailed it, brother. Show that to Shayla. Shayla, check that out. She's got a hand going for <laughs> she's, like that. She's <laughs> wanting you to drop it. <laughs> Just drop it right here, would you? Mar said, man, I surely appreciate you taking time out of your day to show us how to do this the this, uh, SCA way. Yeah. I've so enjoyed it, man. I've learned too. a lot. Like, you know, there's many guys out there cooking. This is my SCA way. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of guys gonna watch this video and they're gonna say, hey, but I don't do that. That's fine. Right. You know, right. There's, I have my own way to cook a hog. You know, so everybody has his own way. I'd like to share, I think this video will be really good for some guys that are really trying to get on SEA. Right. Mm-hmm. There's, this will give you enough yeah. to be a good contestant out there. Oh, yeah. ain't no doubt. So you, you, can, no you doubt. can give Bad somebody information here. Yeah, so there's a lot of good information. If you can watch, watch it over again. And, and look, practice. Yeah. You know, take your time, practice. practice makes perfect. That's right. Yes. And yeah. uh, you, you'll give somebody a hard time out there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Brian, I appreciate it too, brother. Yeah, man. I enjoyed it. I know I learned a lot here. Oh, yeah. Brian sure. brings us the uh, the Bayou Dust. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Good stuff. Tremendous yeah. flavor. We got, hey, look, we got to beat the flies out of this steak. So, the way of doing it, we're going to eat it. That's right. <laughs> I hope y'all enjoyed this video. Until next time, Smoky Ribs. Hog Addiction? Hog Addiction Headquarters. Smokehouse by you. Guys, I hope you enjoyed that. That's the most thorough tutorial we could do on a steak. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We appreciate you.